Hello and welcome to the We Ball Podcast. I'm Luke Crumbers. Joining me is Tyler DeSena. Tyler, how we doing, my friend? Unlike the first three weeks, my Miami Dolphins lost. And it was not just the loss, but the loss of QB1. So I'm not doing great on that front. But I mean, in general, doing well. Another week of NFL football in the books, and I'm excited for week five. Yeah, let's just start this podcast by saying prayers up to Tua. Because that looks bad. I know he's, like, probably okay. Like, that's what the word is. But Somehow, like, there's beautifully. Talk, there, yeah, there's talk of him being told to retire by the world's leading neuropsychologist. Like, um, it's it, it was scary. And as a Bama fan, I love Tua and have loved Tua since that man was 18. Because he was a freshman. Um, and, like, he saved our national championship. So... Like, I love Tua, and uh, it was scary. I was on the phone with a, a friend of mine when it happened, and it it was like – like, I have never seen an injury that looked that bad. Yeah, um, I mean, it was – as a Dolphins fan, of course, you know, you being a Bama fan, you obviously have ties, and, you know, him being my team's current quarterback right now, it was absolutely awful because we're like – this game was close – Miami was like not moving the ball great, but it was like, I think seven, six when he got hurt. And we're like, okay, we just need like, to, we're going to step it up in the second half. They're going to win this game. And then Miami starts driving down the field a little bit. And then you just see him holding onto the ball. And you're like, you, you, there was just a bad feeling on that play. Cause it was just, it felt very odd. And then he went down and I'm, it was awful. I don't think I said another word for like, it, like until past halftime minimum, it was, there was no purpose in like watching the rest of the game. You knew it would be a loss and like, you didn't even care if it was a win or a loss. Cause you just worried about whether or not he was okay. And thank God it looks like long-term he's going to be fine. Might miss a couple weeks, but prayers up to Tua, man. This keeps happening over and over again to him, but luckily he continues to find himself in what really is the best case scenario coming off these injuries. And that's all we can pray for. Yeah, I just realized, everyone, I didn't have my mic up for that, so that audio might suck. Um, but we're going to keep rolling because that's who we are over here at the We Ball Podcast. We got that grit. We're academic weapons. Um, but, yeah, it was like – like, I did, I turned the game off. I was on Twitter because I wanted to see if he was okay. Um, got a little riled up because people are insensitive and idiots. Um, but we don't have to get into all that. We're going to talk about some of the top storylines this week, change it up a little bit from our normal game recaps. Um, but yeah, let's talk about, you know, what is your storyline of the week so far, Tyler? I think one of the most interesting storylines this week and one that we've been waiting for, because it's unlike other years, we had like a number one pick quarterback who was playing immediately. I think that the storyline of the last week and going forward is, the rookie quarterbacks. We finally got to see Kenny Pickett and you know, his first pass was intercepted and people were making the Kenny Pickett jokes, but really he wasn't that bad. I know three interceptions looks rough, but for a quarterback's first start against what really is a better defense than they let on, they have a very good secondary like that. The jets have a very good secondary. was my point. And it was a, Um, it was a solid performance. I think, I mean, it's something to build off of. Obviously I don't think he's going to be taking that many shots down the road, but I mean, I don't think a ball hit the ground besides the incomplete, besides the interceptions, he didn't throw another incompletion and he made some really nice passes, including one. I think it was up to up the seam to Pat Fryer move. So there's a lot to build on for Kenny Pickett. And if they use him more in the game manager role, instead of having him take as many shots, I think he can definitely succeed. The only problem is now he faces the gauntlet of, I know the bills are up next and there's some very tough games on their schedule, particularly the next four. So that certainly could be interesting, but again, he's exciting. And then another rookie quarterback we got to see that we didn't expect to see was Bailey Zappi, who actually looked like the best rookie quarterback we saw this past week against a vaunting Packers defense. And he really was making plays. So you know, maybe they have something there that they can like develop and just kind of sit behind Mac Jones, Brian Hoyer. And just, you know, if they ever need a spot start, you never know. Maybe Bailey Zappi's that guy. So I think the rookie quarterbacks are really the number one development this past week. So first off, Kenny Pickett, you know, I'm a, I'm a Jersey guy. He's a Jersey guy. He's from the shore conference. The shore makes the best athletes, uh, only athletic conference to put two quarterbacks into the NFL this year. So take that, everybody else. Um, we're just like that. 
Anthony Brown and uh, Kenny Pickett. But like, I didn't think Kenny was bad. I know, I know. If you're a exactly. stat sheet hunter, if you're a stat sheet hunter, like, like it was bad, obviously. But even though he threw three picks, he still played better, even statistically, than uh, Trubisky, just because he ran and scored touchdowns. Yeah, he had two touchdowns, I believe, right? And they were both rushing. Yeah. So, again, I mean, the Jets, the Jets aren't like with Zach Wilson, they're not a bad team. They um, really aren't. Think, they're, and he I looks going forward pretty solid, especially in the second Yo, half. Zach looked good, bro. Zach looked, he did not look great in the first half because, no, you know, he's well, a little bit of rust, rust and had, yeah. to knock, had to knock the rust off. But the second half, he, he looked was looking good. good against a Steelers defense that I know they don't have TJ Watt, but like, that is still a very good, consistently good defense. And he was looking good enough to win them games and he came back and won that game for him. So good for Zach. Listen, man. listen, I'm a notorious Zach Wilson hater, like notorious. I, I have to, to be. Well, I compared I him to Drew Locke, who I compared to like uh, a pile of trash coming out. So like I, th- I thought Drew Locke was like a fourth round pick coming out. Um, and I compared Zach Wilson to him. So that tells you a little bit about how I feel about Zach Wilson. I had him only above uh, Davis Mills coming out of the current quarterbacks from that draft class. Um, obviously not including like Mond and Trask and all those guys who suck uh, and are horrible, but like, wow. they're so bad. They're like, like Newman. Where's Newman at? Where, where is that man? Nobody's heard from him. Know. Nobody Nothing. cares. He's in the, he the Eagles probably. practice squad for a little bit with with Carson Strong. Don't I think so. About Carson Strong. Um, but you know, talking about Zappy, obviously a lot of like you know draft Twitter guys and Senior Bowl guys were high on Zappy because you know he was there. Um, and the stats he, were great too. So it was like you know a quarterback with high production, like you know maybe could be a guy who could like step into some sort of role if like necessary. Draft, well, he draft Twitter specifically does love these guys who like you yeah. know played multiple years, lit it up with high production. Yeah, exactly. Um, but the Zappy thing is like he had to come in and play a completely different style of offense than he played at um, was it Western Kentucky? The Hilltoppers. Yeah. yeah. Um. So like they he never took the ball from under the gun, and. Like under center, he was never under center. He was always in shotgun. Like he's learned that new offense rather quickly. And for him to come in against Aaron Rodgers, I know he only had ninety nine yards, but like no picks, didn't turn the ball over. Uh, he might have fumbled actually. I don't remember. Yeah, he did fumble. Um, but like you can't control when you get sandwiched between two, you know, rather large uh, defensive linemen. Like there's nothing he could do in that situation. Um, uh, but like he played well, he distributed the ball well, 10 completions and 15 throws. Like he wasn't bad. And watching that game, I was like, wow, Bailey Zappi might be Aaron Rodgers in Lambo, um, too. Yeah, in Lambo in his first like game. Obviously, Rodgers played better and ended up winning that game. But the fact that Bailey Zappi got that game to overtime is ridiculous. Yeah, the fact that they were even competing. Yeah, like at all because that Patriots team is bereft of weapons. I mean, Devontae Parker is currently probably their best receiver, and yeah, he Kendrick is very Cohen, injury Devontae prone, Parker. can't separate. These are like the worst style of receivers that the Patriots offense can have. And yeah. Bailey Zappi was making it work, he was doing with, he yeah, was at least a little doing well with what he had, somewhat. Like they carried the ball, they ran the ball 33 times. Obviously, that's a lot, but they have an effective running attack. Like they have two guys who both got over sixty yards. Exactly. So, like, you can't blame them for running the ball. That's not Bailey's fault, and that's not the team's fault. That's what they should do in that situation. Um, but I'm pleasantly surprised with how well Bailey Zappi handled that. He'll probably play again this week. I'm guessing. I don't know what Mac Jones' status is, um, but high ankle sprain. I'm assuming he's out another week. So we'll see. I think Bailey could be a fun little like project for the Patriots. Exactly. That's what he's never going to be like the guy, but it's something that they can they can work on and maybe have a spot starter potentially. He a can solid be Chad Henne. That's all he needs to be. Especially when did they when did they draft him? What pick, what round was that? I mean, it was day three, I have right? No clue. So I think so. I think it was five yeah. or something. Yeah. I mean, you're never drafting. I know the Patriots obviously have the Brady reputation, but you're never drafting. No, it was your fourth fifth. round. 
you're never drafting a day three quarterback to be the franchise guy. So if he can literally just be a spot starter, the maybe, you know, the backup of the future at some point, then that's hitting on that pick. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he sits on the bench for five years. You're taking that out of a fourth rounder. 100%. If he, if he becomes that, that's the, the backup, Davis, that's the Davis web, you know what I'm saying? Like that's what he wants yeah, for the Giants. That's, out of West Virginia. that's a hit immediately. If he's yeah. a backup so, production out of him, he's a hit. I mean, they didn't need him. Like they, they won't need him that much. I don't think. Um, once Mac gets back, I don't think Mac is going to become injury prone all of a sudden. Like I think it was no. one injury. Um, but yeah, I think we should move on from that. We talked a lot about these young guns. Um, so another storyline is obviously the Eagles. Uh, they played their first good team this week in the Jaguars. You know, finally playing some actual competition in the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, I said that. Um, it's crazy. They to really. Think about. I'm gonna get on. I'm gonna be honest with you. Trevor Lawrence lost four fumbles and threw a pick. Trevor Lawrence lost that game. Oh yeah, like, for know, sure. I know I it's mean, not all on him. His O line kind of sucks. Um, yeah, no, there, it was a rough game all around, but it was you bad. can't lose four fumbles. That's like the most and, and in, throw in like a very long – and a pick. So, yeah, he turn, he did, I mean, turning the ball over five times, it's going to be at least largely on the quarterback position. So, there's not much good you can say about Trevor Lawrence this game. I mean, obviously, and, dude, this isn't going to turn everyone off the Trevor Lawrence train. He's playing a stellar defense, so like yeah. – you know, and the Jaguars fans were not probably expecting to go win in this game. This isn't much about their future, but the Eagles, on the other hand, they continue to just look absolutely dominant. The Eagles look good. Like, they look legitimately good. Um, Nick Sirianni somehow turned out to be a good coach. I don't I don't know. I'm going to be honest. It's like, working. Sir- just kind of there in my mind. Like, he was on the Pat McAfee show today and played rock, paper, scissors. Like, that's the type of he's a dog, bro. He's an absolute dog. He's got that dog mentality. Uh, he's from he's from New York. You know, he's that guy. He's a he's an Italian guy from New York. So uh, I got I got faith in him to at least get them like the NFC's title. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They might not they, win it all. But this this conference sucks. So he's doing might. enough with the roster. They're four and out. Yeah. They've got a great roster. Probably the best like top to bottom roster in the NFL. And they are making it work. And that's really all you have to do when you're a head coach of a great team is you've just got to like, you know, do enough to go out and win games. And, you know, they haven't exactly played an opponent that many people thought they would lose to maybe the Vikings, but like they're still going out and beating these teams. So we'll see what happens when they face some like, you know, real top end competition. If they play any of these top teams in the AFC at some point in the year, or even some of these NFC teams that are near the top, We'll see how they perform against them. But, I mean, the expectation right now is this team can go out and beat just about anybody. So this is my thing, right? In a game where Quez Watkins had one target and it didn't make a play, like he had zero catches, zero runs, like nothing like that, Um, and Devontae Smith had three catches for 17 yards, they still put up 200 yards of passing offense. It's crazy. I mean, the fact that they – you would think that Jalen Hurts, with that kind of stat line, last year if you saw those receivers were doing poorly, you'd be like, Jalen Hurts probably had a bad game. You throw yeah, you yards. would think he had 100 game. yards, and you'd be like, poor performance from Hurts. Maybe they win because of the ground game. But this team, I mean, they are winning because of their ground game. That is a very large part of it. But Halen, Jalen Hurts has made them – Jalen Hurts has made them a very more than respectable passing offense right now. They are playing great complementary football when it comes to being able to run to set up the pass. And that's all you really can do with this offense because, you know, you've got a great offensive line up front that is just absolutely mauling people. You're going to get a ton of yards on the ground and you're going to run until it stops working. And then a couple of times those defenses are going to creep up and you got to make them pay. And that's exactly what Jalen Hurts is doing. We got to talk about Landon Dickerson. Landon Dickerson is playing at an all pro level. I don't Excellent. want to hear about it. He's playing at an all-pro level. The only reason that man was not a first-round pick is because he was a center coming out and because he had injuries. That man should have been a first-round pick. I said it probably a billion times. That man was a top-15 talent, and nobody gave him looks there because of his injury history. And it wasn't and just you. Was it, was, it was just about everybody. I mean, the, the injuries were what made him fall, but when you looked at the talent on paper, this was a guy that you watched and you're like – yeah, this guy's going to be a stud. And what has he done? He's been awesome. He started a game at every single offensive line position in college. 
I need you. He played in the, the ACC with Florida State, and he played at Alabama. And he started at every single offensive line position in college. I need you to take that in. Those are two high level comp schools. And that man exactly in every position. And there's that video of him like doing like backflips and like cartwheels behind Mac Jones. Like, yeah, I mean, the he's dude, the dude, he's hyper athletic for, you know, for his position. I mean, in general, he's hyper athletic. He's got farm boy strength. Man, he does. The strength is crazy. He's got he's you know great at like moving in space, which is great for him. You know, he he they're they're mauling guys, and he's a main reason for that. It's awesome to see. Yeah, I mean, he got to learn from two obviously, you know, great um alignment of how to do everything they need to, but there's no reason like he's not a staple on this O line for the next 15 years unless he has a catastrophic injury. Like that that's of it. Of course, yeah, no. He will never get demoted because of play or anything. He is playing out of his mind. I think we got we got to keep it rolling here. Let's get into some games of the week before we hit up hot takes. So this is uh, our week five games of the week, and I'm going to start because you know my game is that early early morning in London. Uh, my Giants versus the Packers. Fun fact: Eli Manning scored the first touchdown in London. Um, just you know, little tidbit of information. You can quiz your friends. I don't know. But it's a cool stat. Um, I think this game is going to be bad, like very bad for the New York football giants. And if they win, I'll be uh, insanely happy because the only fully healthy wide receivers we have on the roster who are not questionable, doubtful, out, anything like that, are Sills and Slayton. Those should be wide receivers five and six or four and five. Like, there's no world where they should be one and two healthy. Um, yeah. But Saquon Barkley and Daniel Jones on the ground is going to be probably what keeps us in this game. Uh, Saquon Barkley has more rushing yards than the uh, Chargers, Bucks, Rams, Dolphins, Jets, Bengals, Colts, Texans, Panthers, Steelers, Vikings, Commanders, Titans, uh, Cowboys, Broncos, Jaguars, Saints, Cardinals, Raiders, Seahawks, and Bills. And there are very good teams in there. That's ridiculous. Exactly. That's insane. Saquon Barkley is so back. He is back. I questioned it after, like, I think the second week. Didn't he have, like, a little bit of an off week? Yeah. Like, as far as rushing. I questioned it a little bit. Oh, that might be total yards. That's total yards. Like, they have still, less rushing. That's in rushing yards for them and total yards for him, just to be clear. That's still insane that that one man is carrying this offense, like, to this level, especially because of the fact, like you said, the threat to pass the ball isn't exactly high because the receiving threats on the field are not, you know, guys that are – there is no number one receiver on that team right now. Even if they're all healthy, there is no guy who you look at and you're like, that's our number one. So yeah. the fact that Saquon is, you know, being a receiving threat out of backfield – Absolutely gashing teams in the run game. I mean, he's stellar, and it's so. And, ha- I'm so happy to see him back. This is a guy who deserves it, man. In case you were wondering, uh, most rushing first downs by a quarterback through four week uh, through four games since uh, t- the year 2000. Mike Vick had 20 in 2006. Cam Newton had 17 in 2015. Daniel Jones had 18 in 22 and didn't play half of the end of that game. So in three and a half games, he had more than Cam Newton in 2015. Wow. That's also cool. that stat might have been a joke about the Barkley thing now that I'm looking a little bit deeper into it. Um, but yeah, I he still has like 460 yards and is leading the league. So I don't care. Like, even if that is a joke, he's still carrying this team to an insane level. Um, but yeah, don't take me for gospel on that because I looked at the account and it might be a troll account. Uh, I might have just gone got live, but that is whatever. You know, Either way, it's staying in, and it doesn't it doesn't shy away from the fact that Saquon yeah, Barkley is balling. So four sixty three, yeah. he deserves he, even even if the stat's not one hundred percent real, the dude deserves his flowers. He is killing it right now. Yeah, I I don't know what else to say about Saquon. Um, the health of this team is a legitimate concern. Like, if we can get. Tony and Wandale back. Like, I'm okay with rolling into this week with Tony, um, Wandale, Sills, and Slayton. Like, I'm okay with that with a, you know, an iffy Daniel Jones. I don't think he's going to be able to run that much. That's he's going to have some turnovers. That's honestly a better receiving core than I saw Miami run out to his rookie year for like half the season. So, 
Like That's so sad. Dude, they were I, I don't know why I brought that up, but they were rolling out. There was a week where they rolled out, I believe it was his top three was Matt Collins, Antonio Callaway, and Lynn Bowden. With like That's Malcolm so Perry insane. as the four. It was that, horrendous. It's so sad that they did that to Tua. You know what I'm saying? There's a I believe it's the game against the Chiefs where they rolled that out. I'm waiting for December so I can quote tweet that and then put our current receiving core because it's just it, it's insane how much it's changed. But yeah, no, that receiving core, especially if you have a guy like Tony or a guy like Wandale, those are guys who can make those like freak plays that you're gonna have to make in order to beat a Packers team that no matter how you slice it, is the better football team on the field. And that's like, that was real, just to be clear. That's that is in fact real. Uh, I didn't think Chiefs. it was fake because I knew they had more. I knew that was more yards than the Dolphins had rushing in the Bills because I know those teams are not running the ball really well right now. Well, the Bills are one yard shy of what Saquon has. So yeah, everyone under it, the Bills in rushing yards. So I was, I was, I didn't get trolled. Just to be clear, uh, shout nuts. out to Pro Pro Bowl Gano, my guy. Um, but yeah, that's insane. Yeah. But as for my game of the week, I'm taking. You know, the division that everyone always looks at as one of the most, you know, when these two teams, when these teams play, it's dirty, it's mean, and it's physical. I'm taking the Ravens and the Bengals. I mean, the Bengals just came off. I mean, I know Miami didn't have Tua, but they still went out and won the game. The legitimacy legitimacy of that win is, you know, a little fraudulent. In question. That doesn't, yeah, that was what I was looking for, in question. But that doesn't mean that they didn't go win the game. And the Ravens just came off of yet another just, you know, awful comeback loss. It seems they just can't hold a lead. They can't run the ball. Their corners are clearly not fully healthy. And just the team isn't playing up to standards right now. And this might be a game that we look at and be like, this determines the class of the AFC North. And we're early on. But both of these teams are clearly the best two teams in the division. Cleveland has been performing decently, but, you know, without – you know, quarterback one there and Deshaun Watson, even if he's like, depending on when he comes back, depending on if he's even good, we're all praying on Cleveland's downfall anyway. The I, Steelers, I hope he's horrible. I hope he's terrible. But Pittsburgh, I mean, they could, they have a very tough schedule up ahead. They're already one in three. We'll see what happens there. But these are the class in the division. They're both physical teams. You know, J.K. Dobbins just came back and had a pretty nice performance against the Bills. Joe Mixon, great running back there. And then we got, you know, Joe Burrow, who's bouncing back, and Lamar, who is probably the MVP of the league. And, I mean, is there anyone playing better than Lamar Jackson right now? No, it's hard to say. No. Yeah, he's Jaylen the best player. Hurts, maybe. He's Jaylen the best Hurts, player. Maybe. maybe Mahomes, too. But maybe. right now, like, if you had to ask me, I mean, I think Mahomes is the best quarterback in the league. But if you had to say who's playing the best in the world right now, it's Lamar Jackson. So that's my matchup. It could be a future playoff matchup or it could be a matchup to get in the playoffs. I just think it's very exciting. Yeah, I I like that game. I uh, probably won't watch it, to be honest. I haven't watched primetime football in a long time. I got stuff going on. College is, college is weird, bro. Um, oh, it is. But, like, I, I'll watch Red Zone all day, but I won't, I won't watch primetime. So you all going to have to keep me posted on that one because – I'm not super intrigued by it just because I don't believe in the ability of those two teams to win. It's crazy how many teams in both conferences we looked at and we're like, these teams can go contend. And then we're only four weeks into the season and we're like, all these teams are fraudulent. Yeah. These, these teams, it's not that they're bad teams either. Like it's just, there's so many, they're so poorly. They really are. You, I did not expect – I mean, Zach Taylor, we kind of like – No, you know. Zach Taylor, we knew that man was horrible. We knew he was bad. We knew he was he was poor, and he like he, he was a poor coach. Exactly. Was, but a Harbaugh coach. team? I don't know how we expected a Harbaugh team, which are usually the best coach teams in the league and, you know, very physical, just well-coached football teams. I don't know how you would expect a team like that that goes in and just stops bad opponents, stops good opponents, just plays really good football to go out and lose games like this. This is just so uncharacteristic of the Ravens. And I mean, both of these teams, like you said, are just very poorly coached right now. So maybe one of them can bounce back. If I had to pick one, I'm going to pick Baltimore, but you never know. 
Uh, yeah, I'm going to pick Baltimore to bounce back out of the two of them, mostly because I don't believe in Zach. Like, I don't believe in Zach Taylor. I think Harbaugh, Harbaugh will eventually bounce back as a coach. I don't think it's fully him. I think it's Greg Roman. Um, and their running game, like, they just – yeah, in general. Like, the running game is the strength of their team, and without Lamar, it just hasn't been good. And that's the thing. It's been, hard. It's been bad. Like, it's the, been legit. The reason bad. they couldn't beat the Dolphins, I understand their cornerbacks were playing bad. And, like, the Bills game, I didn't get to fully watch, so I didn't really see it as much. But the Dolphin game, it was not as much because of their corners. I mean, I know that they gave up a lot of points. But there were times in that game where all they needed to do was run the ball, and they just simply could not. And I know Miami's got a good run defense, but this is a team that usually, no matter who's in front of them, is just mauling, and they were not doing that. Yeah, like, obviously the corners should have made plays. But when they – like, you should still be able to run out that clock. There is no reason for sure. should have had that ball. We shouldn't time. have that many possessions. Yeah. We should have never had that many possessions to begin with because this Ravens team, like they do every year, should have just, you know, pounded the, clock, pounded the rock and ran the clock out, and they couldn't do it. All right, man. I think that's good for games of the week. We're going to jump into hot takes here. Um, we have, you know – David Valentine, you know, my man is here every week. Shout out to David, bro. That man, that nice. man really likes the chalkboard. Everyone should join the chalkboard. Uh, make sure, you know, link in our bios, uh, Tyler's TikTok bio, my Instagram and Twitter bio. And so, it will be in the description on. of this on YouTube as well. Always, always. Um, of course. But he says the Jags win the AFC South. It's to the point where everyone else in that division is so bad. I don't think it's a hot take anymore. Like it was. It's not anymore. I mean, yeah, there's just nobody to believe in. We were talking about the Colts might – what was it? The Colts could finish last was a take we had a couple weeks ago. By and the like, same guy. Yeah, and the thing is I'm not even sure that either of those are hot takes right now. Not, none of these teams in the conf- I mean, in the division are performing well enough, and the Jaguars are just you know playing good enough football. Of course, they just had a bad loss to the Eagles, but it's the Eagles. Everyone's losing to them right now. So – they could easily beat up on this division and in a division where, you know, only eight or nine wins is going to probably guarantee you a playoff berth. This is probably the team in that division that goes and makes the playoffs. Yeah. We're going to, I mean, th- there's nothing else to say. Like that's just, it's just how the AFC South is this year. This is worse than I think the NFC East ever was like, honestly, it might be. I know I'm, I know Except I'm for maybe that one year where Washington made that was it two years ago where Washington yeah. made the okay, playoffs yeah. at like seven, yeah, eight and that, one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that might be. The, I forgot about that. I'm gonna be honest. Because there's a I team in this out of memory. A team in this division might have a winning record. There was no team in that division with a winning record. So, all right, we're gonna keep it rolling here. With Kenny Galladay can still be an elite wide receiver on some teams. He just doesn't fit with Daniel Jones. Um, I Daniel Jones I, rarely throws 50-50 balls, which is what KG excels at. That's fair. That's a fair point on the like he could be better. But elite wide elite. receiver, I mean, the only there is no elite guy in the NFL right now who can't run routes, and Kenny Galladay can't run routes. He simply so just give back. him pay most of his contract, not all, most, and give him to the Rams and let Stafford have his fun. Like, just get him out of my face. I don't want to see him ever again. I don't know if Can that's he... a good fit though, because Stafford likes his separation. I don't really know if they're looking for a uh, a jump ball guy right now. I mean, I understand that he played with Stafford, but and was with that Rams with system. In that Ram system, I just don't know if it'll work. Then but. where does he go that people don't like separation? You know what I'm saying? Like he has to know go what with the team. Guy what knows. team can you go to that like they don't want their receivers to separate? If this was five years ago, there would have been a ton of teams after him because he even a couple of years ago when the Giants signed him, there were multiple teams in the Kenny Galladay sweepstakes. Like teams, yeah, even a couple of years ago, bidding up. We have very the, much. The Bengals were bidding up. There were teams very much that were in favor of you know jump ball receivers but now over the last few draft classes we've seen how the receiver the classes have like you know panned out the busts that have been guys that are just big and don't exactly do much else the guys yeah i was that's the main one we just i was so low on the kill harry they're moving we're moving much more in a direction where you have to be able to separate and that's how teams win because they have elite speed or elite route running and he simply just doesn't do either so I wouldn't say elite, but he definitely has a role on some team. I would go get him with like a veteran, you know, maybe if you could ship him off to like the Packers or something, maybe Rodgers could get with, maybe Rodgers could get something out of him because he loves those go balls and those fades. 
getting somebody who can go make one-on-one plays instead of watching, you know, Romeo Dubs drop passes in the end zone. Leave, it's, leave Romeo alone. Leave hey, Romeo he's played alone. very well. I was just saying that, like, maybe you can go get him another veteran that he trusts. So, my, I don't my know thing is about Kenny Galladay. The whole, like, the whole – wide receivers as a whole have changed. Look at the past few draft classes. You got guys like Tony Robinson, uh, Tutu Atwell, uh, Dwayne Eskridge going above guys who – are bigger than them, stronger than them, can catch the ball like better than them because they're short and fast and they can get around people and everyone's trying to find the next Tyree kill. Exactly. How many receivers are we seeing that get drafted early and we're like, this guy has hands concerns. It's a yeah. lot. That if you yeah. would have told if you would have said even four or five years ago that receivers were getting drafted this high that had hands concerns, I don't think I don't think people would have believed you as much. It isn't about hands, and it's really not about being a total receiver. It's about being a guy who can get the ball in space and can go make yeah. plays. We live in a positionless fo- – uh, the closest we're going to get to a positionless NFL is ahead of us in right now. So whenever you can go get guys that just have natural gifts and go make plays like in space, that's what teams want. This is a message to all high school football players. Go run track and go be a hurdler and go play basketball. Go for do sure. all three of those things if you want to be a wide receiver in the NFL. Yeah, the more the more individual skills you have and the more potential gifts you have, the more you're going to get looked at because a lot of guys can go up and make a one-on-one catch. Not a lot of guys can go burn you on a go route or a double move. It's that simple. Yep. All right, here we go. One last one from Bar of Soap 32. Um, off a pure football standpoint, Browns are better off with Jacoby Brissett than Deshaun Watson at quarterback. As much as I would love for this to be the case, it's not. It, pro- it sadly won't it be. It probably isn't. We have no clue who Deshaun Watson is. This is, uh, yeah, a, this but is like you, getting a rookie quarterback. It's not, though. I mean, maybe not right now, but like going into like next season, okay, he will yeah. 100% be better. It's just... I don't know. I, I mean, we're, I, don't I like feel them. bad. I feel terrible for Browns fans because they no, finally had a team They're that I, I, I do. I Not the specific Deshaun Watson Browns fans, but They're the right. innocent ones who have put up with this team for so long and have been <laughs> they've dealt with, you know, Baker Mayfield, and they, and they really thought that they had something and thought that this team was heading in the right direction, and then they go out and trade for a guy that's really hard to root for. And – and everyone in the and everyone in the league is just simply rooting on them to fail. And as much as I would love to see the Browns succeed, I just can't root for a team whose quarterback is Deshaun Watson. There's no way you just called them the innocent Browns. <laughs> Those what I, I, you know who I'm talking about. That's not there. Are I know. Certain... I know. I know. I know. I know what you mean. But in for, like you, people can make an inference that you mean other Browns fans are guilty, which is so funny to me. The ones who are saying the things that they're saying, which I'm not going to bring up here, they are no. guilty. I'm not. There's no. no inference to be made. They're guilty. All right. Well, you heard it here first, Browns fans. You're guilty. I no, hope everybody not. enjoyed this episode of the We Ball Podcast. Make sure to join our chalkboard link in bio. Leave a like, subscribe, hit the bell, follow us on all our social media. Uh, right down there. That's for TikTok and Twitter for the two of us. And, and at we we Ball to... Podcast as well. On yes, those on TikTok. Because we're trying to get to 1,000 so we can go live and have a little bit of fun on there. Uh, Tyler already goes live. Make sure to f- check in with him. Make sure to check in with you know everything we do and have a great night. Uh, thank you all for listening. Peace.